For the first decade of my jiu-jitsu journey, the only physical activity I had was jiu-jitsu. A little bit of mountain biking here and there, a little bit of kettlebells here and there, but really it was almost exclusively just jiu-jitsu. I was really busy in those days. I was a software developer, so I would sit at a desk, you know, staring at a screen for eight, 10, 12 hours a day. And, uh, and so the only thing I really had time for was to go train jujitsu. And what would happen is I would train usually at night and get done training, feeling beat up and go home, take a shower, go to bed, get up the next morning, kind of hobbling around, feeling crooked, feeling a little bent out of shape from the night before. Maybe my shoulder was a little jacked up. Maybe my back was a little jacked up. And what would I do? I'd go to work and I'd sit at a desk again doing this another 10 hours. Rounded shoulders, shortened hamstrings because your legs are bent the whole day, you know, your back unsupported. And then I would go train again and try to put myself back together before class started to get the kinks out so that I could train jujitsu again. And over the years, I noticed that it was prematurely wearing my body out. It was causing asymmetrical wear and tear because jujitsu is not a balanced activity. It's not a balanced activity. It will certainly make you fitter. It'll make you stronger in a lot of ways, especially isometrically. It'll you know teach you to move your body well. It'll keep your mind young. It has a lot of great benefits, but it's not a balanced workout. We are very rounded in jujitsu. We tend to be the ball in jujitsu. So we never work the opposing muscles. We never open ourselves up. We never work the, you know, the, the, again, the opposing muscles. And so it's very imbalanced. And those imbalances, along with the, the patterns that each one of us exhibits in jujitsu, because each person plays jujitsu slightly differently, and it's those patterns, right? Maybe you lay on your right side more than your left side. Maybe you, you know, do certain things on one side. You will create these asymmetries that will uh, start to cause problems with your body over the years. And you can get away with that for a while. I mean, if you're 20, if you're in your 20s, even your 30s, you can get away with that. You can just go train, go to work, train, go to work, train, go to work. No big deal. But at some point, usually late 30s, early 40s, you start to realize that those aches and pains are going to become permanent problems if you don't pay attention to them. Anytime there's something sore from jujitsu, there's inflammation. And what that body part needs is mobility and mobilization and blood flow and active recovery and restorative work to get that thing healed quickly so that you can go train again and not see that same part getting hammered and hammered and hammered in an, unre in an unrecovered state. And so after that first decade of having some injuries, having you know all sorts of issues, I finally started getting a little smarter and realizing that like the yin and the yang, you can go beat yourself up in jujitsu, but you need an active process, an active practice of recovery. Recovery is a skill. Jujitsu is a skill. Recovery is a skill. And so today I want to talk about how we can achieve longevity in jujitsu so our bodies don't completely break down. And really what, when we're talking about longevity, we're talking about longevity in life. If you, we are physical beings and the quality of our life is directly proportional to how well our bodies function. And uh, if you want to train forever in jujitsu, you better pay attention to those things. So let's talk about it. <laughs> In case you haven't heard, I'm going to be running an all-inclusive jiu-jitsu camp at a beautiful resort in Costa Rica this December 2024. If you've never done a training camp like this before, 
this is the best way to do it because it's all inclusive. Everything is included. You just show up and train and everything else is taken care of for you. Uh, for more information, just go to my website, rickellis.com and click the events tab and you can get all the information there. And I look forward to spending some time with you in paradise on the mat. So how do we achieve longevity in jujitsu? Let me throw a few things at you. Uh, the first is that as adults, we tend to be oftentimes fairly immobile, right? As kids, we do cartwheels and somersaults and we run and jump and play. But by the time you're deep into your 30s, you're probably just sitting a lot. And over the years, we become rigid, we become inflexible, and our midsection expands sometimes due to inactivity, due to a slower metabolism. We're carrying around extra weight, which puts you know stress on our joints, and we're not very mobile. And we decide, hey, let's let's take up jujitsu. And so you take up this really dynamic sport, this art in jujitsu, uh, which is at its core just a movement art. That's all jujitsu is, it's a movement art. Oftentimes you have to move yourself under pressure. You've got someone who's pulling on you or pushing on you or a combination of those things. They're pulling with their arms and pushing with their legs or they have you tangled up and you are having to move while you're tangled up, while you're under pressure. But it's still, a movement art because everything you do in jujitsu requires that you move yourself. Everything. You want to escape side control, you have to move yourself. You want to sweep somebody, you have to move yourself under them so your center of gravity is below theirs. You want to submit somebody, you have to move yourself into that position. Everything is movement in jujitsu. It's just a movement art and the quality of your movement is based on how well your body functions. If you have poor mobility, if you have poor joint integrity, if you're carrying around extra weight, well, your, your potential for beautiful jujitsu is limited because you don't have the mobility. And so the question is, what is the ideal body prototype or what's the ideal body composition for jujitsu? Let's start there because that's the machine, right? The body is the machine. The machine can be trained, but you need a body that's constituted optimally to being able to do jujitsu. And I believe that that optimal composition is a lean body with relatively low body fat. If movement is the core of jujitsu, well, every extra pound that you carry limits your ability to move or it creates a physical impediment. If you have a big belly, you're not gonna be able to do a sit up very well. And so uh, having a lean body is really the prototype and we see it in competition. The lighter weight categories, the middle weights, the light weights uh, are always more dynamic and have more beautiful jujitsu than the heavyweights. And I'm not saying you can't be a heavy person and go on to, you know, become skilled in jujitsu, but you're not going to develop that skill through, you know, beautiful movement in the way that you would if you weighed less. But from a longevity perspective in jujitsu and a life longevity perspective, that extra weight will wear you out prematurely and it will make the quality of your experience in jujitsu worse. It's also going to uh, mean that your jujitsu is a little riskier. Why? Because if movement is the core of jujitsu, uh, you know, when I train jujitsu, there's a constant risk to reward analysis happens continuously, risk to reward. As my opponent moves or as I move or I consider a move, uh, there's always a risk to reward analysis because fundamentally I wanna keep myself safe. That's my number one goal, keep myself safe. Well, how do we keep ourselves safe? Well, we have to be able to move in those moments where something is in danger. 
I experienced that the other day. I was rolling with this really tough blue belt, tall, lanky, you know, good pressure. And he kept attempting to set up a knee bar against me. Uh, but his execution wasn't very good. And as a result of that, my knee kept getting in kind of a compromised position. And so I had to keep slipping the knee and slipping the knee. Every time he did it, I'd have to slip the knee. Well, if you have good mobility, you can make those split second decisions and execute them in a way that keeps you safer. And so being lean, I think, is really uh, important in jujitsu. Your cardio is going to be better. Uh, you know, everything really about your jujitsu is going to be better. Your strength to weight ratio is going to be better. Uh, why do, why can most eight year olds do pull ups and most adults can't? Well, it's tends, it's strength to weight ratio. And so if you are leaner, you'll automatically be stronger relative to yourself. And your joints won't have to carry as much weight, which means they can now operate more functionally. So if you are someone that wants longevity in jiu-jitsu, the starting point, the starting point for that is getting your body composition optimized. Now, how do you do that? Well, that's a deep subject. You know, I don't want to get into the nuts and bolts of diet and nutrition, but it is about making choices in how you eat, what you eat. Um, I'm a fan of fasting. When I need to lose weight, I try to do it the fastest way possible, which means stopping eating. And so uh, I was carrying around 20 pounds, 25 pounds of extra weight a couple years ago uh, after coming through a divorce and some other things. I was not eating well. I wasn't taking care of myself and I had some extra pounds to lose. Well, I started doing a water fast, a 36 hour water fast once a week. So I would do a 36 hour fast, uh, always when I come down or come off of the fast, uh, I'm always motivated to eat real, real clean because I feel so good and I want to keep that train rolling that for the two, three days after the fast, my diet is always really clean. And then I'll loosen it up a little bit, but hey, it's next week and now it's time to do another 36 hour fast. And so I dropped 25 pounds in like three months just by doing that, cleaning up my diet, doing some fasting. And, uh, you know, I'm not telling you what to do. I, I mean, you can count calories if you want, but that's a slow grind, I think. Uh, but you have to get your body composition worked out. And that's the first thing I would say about this. The second thing that I would say is you need a daily restorative practice. Every day you should be starting your day with a restorative and recovery process. You train jujitsu. The night before, you uh, have slept all night, you, your body's been immobile. What do you need? You need to get up and begin getting blood flow into your body and mobility, get those joints working, especially at the end ranges of your joints, opening up, you know, the areas that were closed off the night before. And so me, uh, for, for me, uh, my daily restorative practice involves a few things. Number one is I do foundation training. Uh, foundation training is uh, it's an isometric program that targets a lot of the connective muscles in your back, especially that help you hold your posture and help your back be strong. It's a real simple protocol. Uh, I mostly just do the back oriented components from foundation training. It takes like 15 minutes. Uh, you can go on YouTube and you can watch, I think it's called the 10 minute, you know, back workout, foundation training, 10 minute back routine. Uh, if you want to try it. So I do that every day. It gets my, my back fired. It gets things working. After that, I do a little bit of mobility work. I'll get on my hands and feet and I'll wander around on my hands and feet. I'll do various mobility patterns. I'll try to get my hips moving and my shoulders moving, uh, maybe some animal movements, maybe some whatever. It's based on what I'm feeling that day in that moment. You have to become a good uh, detective to figure out what it is that is the problem in your body and then figure out how to move yourself in ways that stimulate that thing to get mobility and blood flow. And so I tend to focus on that. And then I do a little bit of yoga, downward dog, upward dog, warrior, just some of the basic poses in yoga. That whole thing takes me 30 minutes at most. 
25 minutes, 20 minutes in a pinch. And what it does is it gets the body moving again after being stationary all night and after beating yourself up in jujitsu so that even if you go sit all day at a desk, at least you started your day off with some restorative work. The other thing that I think is increasingly important, especially as you get older, is maintaining muscle mass. So you should have some kind of strength routine at least a couple days a week. I'm not a fan of going real heavy. I'm not trying to become insanely strong. Uh, I think that puts a lot of wear and tear on your joints. So I try to keep it simple and I try to keep it real basic. Uh, I'm drawn to calisthenics, things like dips and pull-ups and push-ups, sp squats. Uh, you know, all those things are great. Uh, I try to hit the four major movement patterns, squatting, uh, hinging, I usually do kettlebell swings for my hinge, or you can do deadlifts. Uh, some kind of pressing motion, whether it's uh, horizontal or vertical overhead pressing, uh, and some kind of, or you know, dips, for example, uh, and some kind of pulling motion like pull ups. And, you know, that's the core of any decent workout, and that can be done really quickly. But what that does is it gives you a little bit of a suit of armor so that you can handle a little more volume of training, a little more intensity of training without breaking yourself down as much. Carrying a little more muscle helps hold things in place. Uh, I should also mention is that you really want to especially focus on your core. You know, I'm, I focus a lot on my core and on my back. I do all the other things that I talked about, but a big part of my strength routine every week is doing a lot of abdominal work and a lot of work on my back to hold this together. People don't think of the abdomen as being part of the back, but it's really the front of the back. And uh, so that's, that's really important. Uh, ultimately, you're gonna have to take control of your own life. You know, uh, become educated in this realm. You know, I can tell you the things that I do and you can mimic that, but ultimately it's better if you become an expert in yourself, an expert in your own nutrition, an expert in your body, an expert in, uh, you know, which areas are problems and which areas are not, so that you can uh, develop a, an approach to daily living that incorporates movement and restorative work and flexibility work within it in ways that are specific to your needs. And so that's what I suggest to everybody. Um, you know, get your lifestyle in order, your sleep, your nutrition, all the things. That's how we achieve longevity, not just in jujitsu, in life in general. I was at the airport the other day, sitting at the wait in the waiting area across from this couple that was about my age, and both of them were obese. She was eating donuts and some kind of sugary coffee drink, and he was eating some kind of crap. And I found myself thinking that these people are gonna be a burden. They're gonna become a burden to society at some point because they'll become diabetic and they'll have heart disease and they'll have all kinds of problems and mobility problems. They will be a burden to the system and they will especially be a burden to their kids, their children. And that's not what we want. We want to be healthy, fit, active people. And jujitsu can be a part of that. It can be a huge part of that. There was a guy that was 76 years old, blue belt, who came to Old Grappler Summit, my over 40 event down here in San Diego. And this guy was the epitome of everything I just talked about. He was lean and fit and mobile and his body functioned well and he was dynamic in his movements and he was strong, yeah. you know? And this guy was 76 years old. I told him, I said, I said, bro, you are my hero. You're my hero. I want to be like you when I grow up because that's the kind of quality of life that we want. You know, you want to get to the end of your life and just die. Right? You don't want a prolonged, you know, descent into the abyss. That's not what we want. So if you're someone that is not taking your recovery and restoration seriously, I, I challenge you to do so because jujitsu will break you down if that's the only thing you do. It'll build up certain things, but it'll break you down if you're not careful. So that's my message today. And 
I look forward to talking to you next time.